Welcome to Fouts Boxing Theory. We fight how we train. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't take this film study personally. I don't give a shit. Okay? So here we go into a little bit of Tim Zhu versus Brian Mendoza, and we're going to be talking about Tim Zhu as his defense and his offense kind of correlate. And what we want to take a look at is, man, is Tim Zhu hard to hit? Yeah, there he is, seeing every beat, every movement from <clears throat> from Brian Mendoza. Okay, now getting on the line, defending this shot, defending the shot, decent guard. Every single time Mendoza makes a move, he's He's intercepting it. He sees it coming, right? This on the surface looks like it's going to be great defense, right? And what do you think defense is, okay? Well, people think if you don't get hit, kind of, right? I like to kind of categorize defense in the vein of can I hit you when you go first, right? <clears throat> am, I able to, am I able to defend my line and protect my line from you? If you make attacks on me, is it free, right? Can I defend my line? Okay, so if you attack me, can I can I counter? Can I catch it? Can I pull it? And Tim Zhu can block punches decently, okayly, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. There's a little bit of sequence of his stepping jab here, and this is very, very, very important as he struggles to find a position to make an attack. He's going to show him this jab here, okay? Now, this is very, very, very important. Now, the next time he gets to the line here, now Brian Mendoza is waiting for a jab. He sees... Uh, Zoo's weight coming to the coming to the, coming to the line, and starts immediately bracing for it. What's going to happen when he gets here? Is that jab going to come out? He's penduluming in. His weight's coming to the line. Here it comes. And Brian Mendoza is taking a step off the line, controlling the line just in case Tim Zoo wants to control it. Wants to throw that jab. He's trying to find out where the line is. Slow Zoo down. Don't let him get close. <clears throat> Zoo again comes forward. Pendulums forward. Triggers Mendoza, showing him. Oh, there's a move here now. There's a move here. Mendoza is going to do this move, and he's going to pivot on this front foot. Uh, Z Tim Zhu later on makes him pay for this. He hits him really, 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 really hard. I didn't get the clip. Um, I didn't have time to sift through all of the whole clips um, to look for it after I missed it. Uh, but I meant to clip it. Don't do this move. A lot of coaches teach this move, pivoting on the front foot like this. Don't do that, okay? You will get hit. You will get hurt. People are catching up, and this is not a good move. This is that pet move of every coach who's like, man, what's the easiest thing that I can do when I step on the line to pretend like I'm a good boxer or I'm a good fighter to someone who doesn't know what they're doing? I'm going to do this move. Every sh fake coach does this. Okay, Don't do this move in a fight. You're going to get knocked out. Okay, PSA is over. We're going to move on here. <clears throat> now, Brian Mendoza has been paying attention to Zoo getting on the line. He wants to fight off that jab. He's expecting a jab right there. He's like, oh, man, I'm going to fight off his jab. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to fight off of it, right? I'm going to – and again, it's only 140, right? 140 of the first round. Tim Zhu's coming forward. Okay, he's trying to pull counter my jab. He's going to pull counter my jab. Now, <clears throat> Tim Zhu has this bad habit of stepping with his jab, and we're going to take a look at it when we watch his training footage. But he has a bad habit of always – stepping with his jab. He's, he doesn't know how to use it exactly as bait, so he kind of explodes to this. Mendoza's pulling it, okay? And then he's throwing a right hand, and he beats Zoo to the punch. We can see that he caught him on the head here. He throws Zoo out of position. He smashed into him, got him with a much better shot. And this is something that, that Tim Zoo doesn't really do. OK, and it's really interesting because, as I showed you the clips before, he did a decent job of seeing when Mendoza was going to make an attack on him, getting off the line and anticipating the weight, anticipating Mendoza coming forward. He did a great job at it, but he wasn't able to blend his defense and his offense. OK, and this is a very, very, very important point for the film study. OK, now we're going to take a look at a bunch of other examples for this <clears throat> jab. Now, again, is he easy to hit? No. But here it is, 126 of the first round. And instead of going 1, 2, 3, which is very, very easy to see coming, right? He comes on the line 1, 3, almost gets him, 2. It's arguable that he gets him to the body here, right? But Mendoza, after throwing the jab and pushing Zoo off the line, and then Zoo saying, okay, I don't got to be afraid of the jab. I can catch the jab. Now Mendoza switches it up a little bit, but Tim Zoo is not protecting his line. He's not countering punches. He's not pulling. He's not looking to make attacks on 
on Mendoza after those punches come. He's not protecting his line. And once Zoo pushes, uh, once Mendoza pushes Zoo to the back half of his line to this defensive posture, he's in front foot position, and now he has access to the front foot and all of the power that comes with it, all of his ability to throw his most powerful right hands and left hooks, and uh, at, at a safe position as well. And Tim Zoo again doesn't come back with any shots. He just allows his opponent to be in that position to control him. Now, the move that he's trying to land again, right, he doesn't blend, right? If he's going to throw a one-two there, he's going to catch him sometimes. But when he jabs here, he can either throw a right hand or he can leave off the line, right? And those are the only things that he practices. He doesn't practice a pull. He doesn't practice a move. And I know one thing you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, like a pull counter is like a pretty high-level move. And you might need a lot of info on your opponent before you do a pull counter because this – Brian Mendoza has done a bunch of pull counters to Zoo already. It's one of the most common moves in boxing. You're going to pull counter literally every single time you fight somebody. If you're not pull countering them, you're absolutely not knocking them out. No, that's not exactly true. But most of the paths of victory to getting a knockout involve being able to pull counter and protect your line. Keep your opponent moving away from you. And Tim Zoo only takes up so much space on the line. He spends so much of that time plodding forward, waiting and hoping, right? Not looking like Mendoza is, okay, well, when a punch comes, he's going to throw that shit and I'm going to get under it and I'm going to attack him. Now, Mendoza, <clears throat> as we talk a little bit about the grade, okay, Tim Zoo gets a C plus. He gets a C plus, maybe a B minus, maybe, right? Maybe, okay? But... Mendoza is a C fighter. He's a guy that can do all the moves. He's not particularly fast. He's not particularly explosive. He's pretty average in all of the zones. He knows the moves. He can do them sometimes, but he doesn't really have any structure. He doesn't really have a lot of control over the line. He's kind of just making it up sequence by sequence, right? Oh, what is he going to give me? Well, come on, bro. There's not that many goddamn things he can do. Whereas Tim Zhu, you know, comes forward, at least he has a little bit of structure, he has his hands up a little bit, he's looking to catch punches and block and stop you from hitting him exactly with any dumb shit. But essentially, they're very similar fighters, right? I know that Tim Zhu can pull counter, we're going to take a look at a, bit of, a little bit of the evidence for that too, but, but this ability here for, <clears throat> again, for... Brian Mendoza to be able to fight off of Tim, Ju Tim Zhu's jab, right, gives him a lot of space in the fight. It stops Tim Zhu from being as active as he wants to because of the fact that Tim Zhu uh, initiates from the right side of the line almost every single time. And almost always from the bladed stance and shooting from the jab, very rarely opening up the line with his rear hand. So it doesn't just give him it doesn't give him a lot of opportunities to interact with Mendoza in an unpredictable way. <clears throat> again, there's just not that many things to do. You're going to be pull countering things. And again, Tim Zhu doesn't really put his offense and his defense together very well. And again, we're going to take a look at the clips, uh, the training clips as we talk about that and we talk about places he can fix that. Now here he comes pushing him off the line. No offense from from Zhu right? No defensive offense, right? No protecting his line. He's just like, no, nah, there's enough space that I can just run away. I'll just run away. People will call this boxing, right? But that's not boxing. He just chose not to engage. I mean, there's times and places not to do that, obviously. I'm not trying to pick on I'm just trying to make a point. But here he goes, stepping jab. Tim Zhu throws his very predictable stepping jab. Brian Mendoza goes down, gets his weight to the ground, two-foot punching. Again, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Uh, if you don't know about two-foot punching, it's the actual way to generate force from the ground. Most of your coaches will teach you um, to pivot on your feet, uh, but not to drive from your feet. Uh, put out the cigarette. Maybe you've heard that, but no one says to drive your weight from the ground up. Okay, uh, I'm the first person in history to be able to teach and discover this theory and this this technique to teach you how to generate maximum power. Okay, a lot of fighters wind up doing this type of stuff and they don't have an actual way to to practice it because they don't know that they're doing it. 
Okay, so with that in mind, check out the Fox Boxing Combat System. Not only am I going to teach you what to do with your feet, okay? And now go ahead, go ahead, pause the video, go to the wall, drive from two feet, and push all your weight into the wall. See how much easier it is to drive weight into the wall with both feet. Now, <laughs> as you get better at this, right? As you get better at this, you learn more mechanics, you practice more boxing, um, you'll hit harder and harder, and you'll get faster and faster at it. And it'll help you. Learn how to weave your offense and your defense together. Okay? Check out the Vox Boxing Combat System. It's the only combat system on the planet that understands the idea of where your weight comes from, where your athleticism comes from. It, it's the only combat system on the planet designed with all of the ways that your body is supposed to work to drive and, main, and maintain your kinetic chain and drive power from your weight, from the ground through your body into your target, okay? Again, most coaches think that punching power can't be taught. You got to be born with it. Well, all they're really saying is that if you train with me and you want punching power, you have to be born with it. They're saying that they don't know how to teach it, but I know how to teach it to any person, man or woman, 100%. You will learn how to punch hard. You will learn how to punch <laughs> like a god, okay? So check out the Faust Boxing Combat System. It's going to teach you what to do so you can weave your weight to the ground and into your opponent. It is the most efficient combat system, the most efficient way to learn what boxing really is. Okay, so check it out. Tim Zhu, check it out too, bro. You need some help. So he's going to smack him with this shot here again. And now look at Tim Zhu fly back with that right hand. Look at him fly back. Now, Brian Mendoza is kind of trying to catch that. Because he's also trying to fight out of this position as well. This is interesting because Brian Mendoza doesn't really have a lot of structure to his training. He kind of accidentally kind of finds himself in a position where he's chaining his sequences together, offense into defense into, right, getting onto the line. Offense pushes Zoo off the line. Now Zoo's going to rhythm step, rhythm step. He's taking a step onto the line, right? Oh, he didn't attack. But he's going to stepping jab here, and he's going to read it. Now he pulls. He gets his weight down to the ground. He's going to throw this down up he throws that shot and he anticipates oh well i threw a punch at my opponent now they're going to try to punch me back again weaving from defensive move to offensive move to defensive move to offensive move again something that tim zoo because of the way that he trains and we're going to talk about it has a very difficult time doing but brian mendoza doesn't keep his hands up he doesn't keep his hands up he doesn't really have a way when he's approaching the line uh, to stop Zhu from getting there into this position that maybe Brian Mendoza has a difficult time attacking without exposing himself, without changing positions. From this position in his line, what feels the most open? If he takes an angle and moves his head and throws a punch, what's the likelihood that Tim Zhu will be able to hit him? So it looks like he, from this position he has such little control over the line. Well, <laughs> Tim Zhu's going to jump on his line and throw a one-two. Again, his most common move. Again. Jumping on the line, stepping jab, one, two. Now check this out. This is very important. Look at the timestamp, 122. He's going to jump on the line. Brian Mendoza is on the back half of his line. The ring is kind of cut off. He's on the back half of his line. He's in this position, ready to catch a jab. It didn't come, but now it comes here. And Mendoza doesn't make it across the line, which means his weight's going to go backwards, which means that the whole left side of the ring is cut off. He can't cross because he has to worry about Tim Zhu's right hand right now. He has to be able to interact with it. He won't be able to cross the line before that punch comes. Okay, So he has to find a way to block it. He doesn't, so he does that thing that Mayweather taught everybody to do is duck below the waist, hide your head. Um, and then body up and then try to grab. It's disgusting. Thanks, Mayweather, for ruining decades of boxing and the minds of, of young boxers, right? Nothing against Floyd Mayweather. I'm so happy that he's successful and that he's happy and he gets to fight all these fucking bums who, who don't know anything about boxing or know what to do with their hands. Also, if you guys want to know what to do with your hands, if you want speed like Ryan Garcia, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. I'm going to teach you what to do with your hands, so not just what to do with your weight, but to, what to do with every single part of your body to develop power okay, and develop speed <laughs> so you will really understand what's going on when you're, when you're watching this stuff. okay. But again, he has to wait for Mendoza to put himself in a position where he feels comfortable throwing his one-two when he's on the back half of his line. Now. As the, the round goes on, he's going to be jumping on the line. Boom. 
And here's this counter little left hook here again. Um, why is he not able to do what Mendoza can do, right? Which is, you know, fight off of his probes, right? Fight off of these moves. Again, no ability to blend his offense and his defense, right? We saw Mendoza pull, throw a punch, block a punch, and then throw another punch. And Tim Zhu, again, having a very, very difficult time chaining two punches together or two sequences together. Okay, getting pushed off of his line here. Okay, but uh, this is one of those moves, by the way, I thought would be really successful for uh, Mendoza, that left hook. Um, and I think this was, to be honest, a very, very, very winnable fight for him. Uh, Tim Zhu didn't really fight all that well. But look at how, what the timestamp is here. Okay, it's 30 seconds. He finally got Mendoza in a very similar position. He's going to jump forward with the one stepping, throw the two again. This is the very next time that Tim Zhu lets his right hand go. Okay. Look at how much time went by, okay? 50 seconds. 50 seconds went by between. And again, that's because when Brian Mendoza makes attacks on Tim Zhu's line to control space, to push him around, right? When he finds a way, oh, here comes Tim Zhu. I better attack him. So he gets the hell off my line, push him off the line. Tim Zhu doesn't have a way to get back on the line. He's instantly back into his defensive mode or whatever you would call it. Now, <clears throat> another problem with this this problem, right? Okay, he doesn't fight off of his probes, which means as he gets to the line, he's not throwing stuff just to control Mendoza. And the stuff that he throws to control Mendoza, which is his stepping jab, gets him countered by left hooks because he doesn't have the ability to fight off of his jabs. So now he's going to get into these positions and hope to get close enough to explode on Mendoza. And as he's sneaking up there, Mendoza's like, ah, I think that's the timing, and he explodes into this shot. Tim Zhu was wrong. The punch that he thought that was coming right now didn't come. It was a different punch, and it wrapped around the guard of Tim Zhu. Mendoza was wrong. The jab didn't come. The jab that he was trying to counter over the top of. Tim Zhu jumped on the line, and he was wrong. Mendoza jumped on the line, and he was wrong. But Mendoza's the one landing a shot that has the, op the opportunity to knock his opponent out. Think about if you, you go to work and you misplace a file. You put it in the wrong place. And instead of getting fired, you win a Nobel Prize for it. Imagine if... Mendoza accidentally knocked Tim Zhu out here. Now, maybe he was expecting Tim Zhu to put the block up in this and that. Maybe. But the idea that Tim Zhu gives so many opportunities because of the fact that he can't blend his defense and his offense together. He, he gives his opponents so many opportunities to land something even when they're wrong. Because there's no penalty for throwing points at, Tim, at punches at Tim Zhu. Unless you hit him and you hurt him and you piss him off and then he just wants to jump on your line and dump punches. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to keep going. Okay. <clears throat> Finds an opportunity to counter. Move quick enough and counter Mendoza to the body right there. Okay. Now, one of the things that Mendoza's figured out is that if he goes for the first punch, he's going to go left hand. Right. He's going to go left hand control. And now most of the time it's right hand. So Zoo's going to be like, okay, what's he doing? Oh, I'll just pull back a little bit. But it winds up being – and keep my left hand up. And it winds up being a double jab. And look at the sweat fly off of his head there. Beautiful shot. Okay? Triple jab even. He does get his head to the other side of it after getting walloped right there. But again, Mendoza can guess. He can just be like, whoa, what do I – Think. I'll just give him one of these. Okay. Now one of these. Okay. So I did double jab this time. Now it's two. And he smacks him. And a three. And smacks him. How many times does Mendoza get to do this and go through this process of throwing and checking and seeing what Zeus capable of doing before maybe he figures it out and lands a shot hard enough to hurt him? But because of the fact, again, that Zhu is not controlling the space, He's, he doesn't throw rear hand probes, he doesn't have punches, straight punches that he can fight off of, 
He doesn't have a real system. Well, he does have a system. You're seeing it. You're seeing the results of his system. And again, we're going to talk about it. Um, and again, check out the Faust Boxing Combat system, system of fighting, system of training, so that it will all come together. Okay? Check it out. It's not just, oh, here's a couple of techniques. Er. No. Again, a very common pattern here. All right? He's going to get on the line, stepping jab, and look it. Catches him with a shot. Okay? Easy work, right? Tim Zhu can't chain his punches together or chain his sequences together or chain his offense and his defense. Now, what happens eventually, right? Eventually, Tim Zhu is going to be right. By the way, he did that front foot pivot right there. You guys think he feels safe here doing this right here? Ooh. You think he feels safe? You think that's a good move right there? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Smacks him with an uppercut here. He gets him. He got him with a good shot. He finally got on the line. And uh, he did a move, right? He's anticipating the jab here. Try to get across that line. Back foot. He's going to move to the front foot. Back foot. Moves to the front foot. Here comes the probe. He's going to try to duck. Is he going to try to get under the... And it winds up being an uppercut. Again, he finally gets him. Now he's going to go, oh, where's the chain? Where's the sequence? Where's his ability to chain that hard punch to the next sequence? He winds up shoving him instead. All right, we'll forgive him. Maybe he knows now the guy's hurt. Okay, put your hand on top of his head. Hit him with an uppercut. Okay, you're going to shove him some more. Okay, boom, gets him with another uppercut. Okay, controlling the head. Why wasn't that a punch? Okay, again. Lands another shot. Excellent shot. Excellent shot. Okay. What's the most likely thing to happen here? Well, his opponent is probably going to throw a punch at him. Right? So here's Zoo controlling him space. Gives him a jab. Now he's getting hit with a punch. Is he not expecting at some point that his opponent is going to try to show the ref not to stop the fight? To show everyone else that he's not that hurt? What about the psychological fact of, oh, well, he just got beat up. And in his mind, he's thinking now, okay, well, I can't let everyone know that I'm getting beat up. The ref, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. But who's the most important person to show that you're there? It's the guy you're fighting. You got to – whether you're hurt or not. Maybe you get maybe you get lucky. You control enough space and he's like, okay, no, he's, he's cognizant. He's here. But you can't let the guy know that you're hurt. So you got to throw some weight at the line. Faint him, control him, do something. Luckily for him, Tim Zhu does not know how to combine his offense and defense. So he lands a couple of shots, but now it's his opponent's turn. Throw a couple punches. Where's the return? Where's the counter? Okay, so he's going to come forward. Uh-oh. Where's the offense and defense? Okay. Pushing him around. Okay, is he going to find some punch? There's a good punch. Control him, right? There's a good punch. Nice. Control. All right. Is he going to find another opportunity? These are bangers. Okay, no. He's just going to get walked into an exchange. Okay, we'll give him a little bit of credit right there. Still fighting there. Okay, but what about this? Is he not expecting punches to come from this guy? Is he not expecting this guy to cross his line? Is he not expecting... You're hunting him down. You're on his line 24-7. What are you expecting to happen, Tim Zhu? What? What are you expecting that makes this so difficult to predict? He's going to throw some punches at you. What do you do? Okay. And now all of a sudden Tim Zhu has no control or no momentum and he landed some insane punches. And all Brian Mendoza was had to throw a, a couple of shots at him. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of the Tim Zhu workout stuff. Okay. And as we're watching, we'll just kind of let it play as I talk and – Talk shit about ways that Tim Zhu can improve. Um, and again, a few things that we want to talk about, right, when he's moving around. Okay. <clears throat> Where's the defense? In two punches. Defense, defense. Stepping jab. Nah, that has to be a new sequence, right? Did he just take a break? Stepping jab into a combination. How many times did he do that? Well, we see him do it. Right, And we do see him do it a few times in the fight. When Mostly when Brian Mendoza hits him with a shot, he'll explode into some shots, right? But if we see him training it here, why doesn't he do it more, right? Again, it's, it is more difficult to blend your offense and your defense together and learn how those things are supposed to work. <clears throat> but uh, we're going to take a look also 
Don't do that, Tim Zoo. Don't pivot on the front foot like that. That's a bad move. Little stepping jab thing here. He's going to circle, jab, step off the line on the, his balls of his feet the whole time. This is the reason why he cannot fight off of his jab. He cannot get his weight back to the ground, right? Just like I was showing you guys with Brian Mendoza pulling and getting down. If Tim Zhu is doing this, and I think he does do it, he'll step and be on the ball of his foot here. It's very, very, very difficult uh, to do pull counters this way. It's very, very, very difficult to uh, to do this. This is a very, very common misconception. This is probably the most common problem because if you don't learn to get your weight to the ground and get your front foot to the ground, your heel to the ground, You'll never be able to drive your weight into your opponent. Okay, You cannot drive your weight just from the balls of your feet. Um, it just doesn't work. You'll never learn how to do it correctly um, because that's a shortcut. If you want to learn how to do the shortcut way, you'll never be able to do the shortcut correctly if you don't do it the right way first. Right? You'll never understand what the shortcuts actually are. You'll only know that way to do it. But again, this is one of the reasons why Tim Zhu has such, um, such trouble chaining his sequences together, his offense and his defense. So we saw him throw a stepping jab here, right? Stepping jab into a boom, 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 right? So it's kind of a stepping jab into pendulum, right? Front foot, jab, comes down, boom, 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 right? Into some punches. It's cool, right? It's cool. Notice the precursor to this move is him moving around. He's going to be following the guy around, right? Okay, a little bit of fake defense, right? Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes he counters with the left hook. Right? See this move here? Sometimes, boom, he'll do that move and he'll throw a hook then. But sometimes in his moves, he'll blend hooks. Very rarely does he throw any other counters, right? And now, off of the defense, stepping jab into the move. It's not really blending the offense with the defense. He still had to move onto the line in his shadow boxing in the same way that he does in the fight where he waits and waits and waits and waits and waits so he can sneak in a one-two when he's got the guy trapped in the back half of his line in the corner, right? If the guy's not exactly in that position, right? And again, when Brian Mendoza, all the other sequences, when Brian Mendoza, when he approaches Brian Mendoza, Brian Mendoza goes first. He throws a punch and pushes Tim Zhu back, and now he's not in the corner. And Tim Zhu doesn't know how to, how to safely chain those moves together like someone like Canelo who every single time he cuts the ring off with you, he's throwing a bomb, right? That's why you're there. And Tim Zhu just gives away all that space, all that time, right? Ooh, a little bit of, look at this. Look at what he has available to him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine buying, buying a Ferrari that goes 220 miles an hour and always driving at 60 miles an hour? Can you imagine the torque? Is that why you own this Ferrari? You're supposed to be a Ferrari, Tim. You're supposed to be a Ferrari. The only difference is, Tim, is that you don't buy the Ferrari that does 220 miles an hour to drive at 60. You buy the, the Ferrari that does 220 miles an hour to see if you can get it to do 250. That's why you get it, to see if you can push the limits. And Tim Zhu is not pushing the limits in his training or in his fights. He's not seeing what he's capable of. Okay. Now, here we get into the real meat of the film study. Here's him practicing all his defense. Anybody see why he doesn't throw any punches when he's defending the line? Here he is, stalking his opponent, trying to pick off everything, right? Left, right, left. Right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, 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 left. He's good at first contact, right? He's seeing the guy's weight coming. He's seeing the – but why is he not countering? Where are the punches? Where is the opportunity here for him to learn – how to fight out of these positions. He's making a fundamental mistake here, right? Oh, I blocked that. Nice. Oh, now I got hit. Right? Because 
is he expecting here, right? When he left this position, he's like, oh, I was so quick in this next position here, right? Boom, blocked it. Right hand comes. Now he's going to be moving under. But should he be moving? Should he be countering? He doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing here, right? Anyway, um, just a little bit from his perspective as he fixes the drill here, right? Oh, it's left hook, left hook. But the fact that he doesn't throw any punches from any of these positions means that he's not going to know how to throw any punches from any of these positions. If he's not practicing and he's not getting better at it, why the hell would he have the confidence to do it in a professional world championship fight? In a place that feeds his family? In a place that he spent his life trying to do everything perfect? Why is he going to do something in a fight that's not perfect? He's not. Okay, a little bit of left hook stuff. A little bit, a little bit. <clears throat> and again, sometimes he will throw a left hook. Now, as we take a look at these clips and we see what positions that Tim Zhu's finding himself in, when we watch the fight, does he punch out of any of those positions? These ones here. Does he? Not really. Sometimes he does this one, right? <clears throat> sometimes he does that one. Very rarely. But he does do it here. So sometimes he will feel comfortable checking the line there. Seeing how you react to it. <clears throat> but again, there's no punches. Okay? We're going to kind of zoom through. I don't want to one punch. It's hard to sneak up on him. He sees everything coming. He's not easy to hit. But look at how often his opponent is crossing the line and circling and making it through the space. And there's no punches coming. Couldn't this guy just be Brian Mendoza literally throwing punches at? Tim Zhu, and Tim Zhu's just walking away. He's like, nah, this is easy. Man, this is easy. But when's he going to throw any punches? Right? Okay, all right. I think I made my point. Okay. Is he going to throw a punch right there? He looked like he was getting ready for a second. Jumps off the line. No, okay. He's just... No, okay. Lame. Okay, all right. Some punches. Kinda. All right. So... Now we're going to be watching this, okay? And again, <laughs> he does throw sometimes some lead left hook. So here he is throwing the, the hook. That's where he practices it. Practicing both of his most common uh, lead punches, right? Boom and boom. Where's the rear hand uh, leads, right? Again, he always fights from the right side of the line. Offense, offense. When is he going to practice some defensive moves on the mitts? Now, I'll guarantee you, he's been doing this for a few camps and no one's called him out on it. I'll guarantee you in his next camp, he's going to be doing pull counters. But um, these are skills. These are skills that Zoo is talented enough to do. Now, real quick, watch this, you guys. He's pretending like there's something wrong with the ground here, right? But look at how he has to get on the tip of his foot here and step with that shot <coughs> and still in that position. And again, he's going to do the same thing, right? He's trying to be on the tip of that ball, right, when he throws this shot here. Boom. Always stepping with his jab. Always stepping with his jab, stepping with his hook, leading with the left hand. But there's no defense here. Right. We saw him do defense. Now we're seeing him do offense. But this is, again, this is why this is why that his, his nickname is going to be Tim Snooze. This is why it's not that difficult to prevent this guy from being able to knock you out. Not only that, like he's only 5'7". To be honest, like pound for pound, Tim Zoo doesn't hit half as hard as he should. Not even half. 
he's an okay puncher. He's okay. <laughs> and like, if you chain together enough punches, right, you'll knock a guy out. <laughs> Common sense, right? I don't know that a little kid is going to get it done, but eventually, you know, enough punches should be enough. Although, <laughs> there was this kid, he wanted to test this thing when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard this, uh, Chinese drop torture, but they'll like put you like on your back and they'll drop, just drop a drop of water right on your, your head and they'll just torture you, they'll just do it forever. And uh, some kid held me down when I was a little kid. Again, I was a really, really small kid. All right, some lead right hands. And he just sat there, just poking me on the head. Tap, 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 tap. Uh, anyway, he thought that it would be a, a fun story. I guess it's fun now. Um, 33 years later, not when I was five. It was not fun then. <laughs> but um, maybe eventually you're going to get a headache. Maybe eventually you're going to, you know. But um, a guy who's a puncher like Tim Zhu, or should be a puncher, again, he uh, he should be a harder puncher than he is, right? Uh, he's got pretty decent technique. There he is going 2-3 right there real quick. Boom. If you have your front foot planted when you throw both of these punches um, and you learn how to drive from both feet, again, free tips from the Fouts Boxing Combat System, you'll be able to throw both of these punches really, really, really hard without moving your feet at all. Don't even have to move your feet. Get on the ball of the back foot. Plant that front foot. Throw your right hand. Throw your left hook. Drive from both feet with both punches. And you'll see how quickly you can drive such an insane amount of power. Jump. Jump. Right? <clears throat> Again, check out the Faust Boxing Combat System. It's going to teach you all the best ways to learn how to do that stuff. <clears throat> but again, this is very interesting because... Oh, oh, he's walking onto the line. We can see his feet now, right? Back foot, front foot. And now he's going to go back foot, front foot, two, three. And this is the reason why he doesn't do this move as an opener, because he doesn't get his foot planted and move into it. He has to do this little stepping here before, right? And he always does this step in his fights with the jab. Oh, you sneaky. He is jabbing. Boom. One, we fight how we train, guys. Again, this is how he's practicing his hard two, three. One, two, three. Okay? But again, where's the defense? Where's the offense mixed? Where's the offense into defense? How can he set anything up against this guy? That is a move that he did practice too. I think he did that um, against the guy as well. Get on the front foot and then just chuck a body shot or a left hook. He usually throws the left hook to the head instead. It'll be kind of his lead in. But again, the lack of offense um, and, and defensive mix prevents uh, Tim Zhu from really, really, really taking advantage of, you know, how hard he works, right? Because here's the thing. Even though he's working on the wrong stuff and he's doing it wrong, he works hard. You have to work hard to still succeed, to, su to succeed in spite of your coach. Okay. <clears throat> Look at this coach acting like he's working hard. Tim Zhu's 5'7". How tall are you? I could hold mitts for a little kid all damn day. What a joke. <clears throat> Real quick. Stepping with that punch too, right? Back foot, front foot. So he does this one very common too, stepping jab. And now he's going to step into the right hand too. He does that one in the first punch that he really lands with the 1-2 against Brian Mendoza. He steps with both punches. <laughs> now, it's important to drill, right? Um, but if both of these guys are spending energy doing stuff, uh, they should both be looking to do it right. Again, he's fast. He can do he can do this stuff, right? All right. Now, this is the majority of the stuff. This is great. If you're going to practice, like, I don't want to say, you know, bullshit, right? But if you're just going to practice throwing a bunch of punches and, you know, just trying to get a workout, this is super efficient. This is what Manny Pacquiao does with 
with Freddie Roach, right? Get your workout in. Get it in. Now, I think Zoo's dad <clears throat> is better at this drill than he than his coach is here. I think Zoo's dad is way better. He does a lot of these cool little things here. Um, but um, really, really, really fun routine here that they got um, high intensity. And I'm just like skipping forward, right? But this is a long time that he does this. Okay? He does this for a long time. This is what shape he's in. This is how conditioned he is. This is how many punches he can throw around without getting tired. Why is a guy that can do this? Why is a guy who's built to go 220 doing 60 miles an hour in all of his fights? Again, because his system sucks. The delivery system, his ability to get from defense to offense, right? And at the beginning of that clip, we saw it. We saw him being able to fly after getting hit with the right hand, fly back with his own right hand. Why can't he do that after his jab without getting punched in the face, right? I just want to show that clip. Where is that clip real quick? Not this one. Is it this one? So he's going to jab, boom, and now he's going to pull with the help of Mendoza, and now he's going to right hand. Why uh, why can't he just do that without getting punched in the face? We find how we train, right? Okay, we're going to take a look at little Tim Zhu on the bag here, right? Okay, we're going to see how many defensive moves he does, okay? Offense, 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 right? A little, okay, okay, a little offense, okay, a little combination. Sick, man, you're good on the heavy bag, are you? Why the hell are you on the ball, that front foot all the time? God, it's so ugly. Your heavy bag work, to be honest, bro, and he's work, man. Little little combination into the worst move in boxing. You hardly do that move. Unless you're slipping a right hand, you're going to do it when you slip a right hand, pull off all the whole line, right? They call it a dart. Is that what he's doing? Is that what he's practicing? Does he ever do that move in his fights? No. No, because he's doing it. If that was why you were going to do it, what's the margin, right? Are you trying to put yourself in a better position to punch? Oh, no. You don't do defense into offense, so when you make it into this position, reset. Okay. Stepping jab, that doesn't count. Sick punches, bro. Don't do this after you land a combination, guys. Right? Don't hop off the line. I mean, use some defense. Right? Again, he doesn't practice any offense into defense, any or any offense defense into offense. He doesn't practice any offense into defense. Is this a defensive move? Is this one of the things that you want to do after you punch somebody? They might have countered you. They might have been waiting for you to throw that punch. Maybe in the gym they're really good at that shot that you finally just let go. And they're gonna counter it. <clears throat> Maybe you've done that move like six times, and now you're going to L-step away. That's it? That's all we got in the heavy bag? No, it's not. We got a little bit more here. Barking dog, thank you. <clears throat> Throws his best right hand here. Very, very common, right, for Zoo. We find how we train. Boah! Right hand. I'm going to grab him, control him with the left hand. Throw the right hand again. How many times did we see him do that against... Brian Mendoza, right? Hit him with a shot. Control with the left hand. Hit him with a shot. Not bad. Not great. Could have been a left hook instead, right? But we find out we train. He's throwing, he's throwing the punches that he practices there. Come on. Throws the jab here. Or uh, throws the rear hand. Boom. And then rolls off and then L steps. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. You're doing that in your – have you ever done that in sparring? Is that what you imagine good sparring looks like? A guy who's really dominant, who's winning his fight? What? Boom. Boom. But what's he doing with his feet? Why is he giving the bag so much time? Control with the left hand. Why isn't he punching? Pendulum off. Now a punch. But again, there's so much space in this, right? Boom, control, pendulum, boom. <clears throat> Where's the defense? Where's the blocks into punches? Where's the pull counters? He's not going to practice any pull counters on this bag? 
in his routine? Are we going to give him credit for a pull counter here? No, because he gets back on the line with the stepping jab because that's the only way he ends the sequence back in the sequence. I don't like it. I don't like it. Take a look at his technique here on his on his foot. That heel coming up almost all the time. Still up when he throws that jab. He's on the balls of both feet. How many times did we get to see Tim go jab, jab, pendulum, two? Jab, jab, pendulum, two. Right? Where's the defense after? Oh, there it was. Boom. Here it is. Control the bag with the left hand. He just threw his hardest punch. What's he going to do? reach for his opponent i bet there's a time in the fight where he does this he hits mendoza with a shot tries to go grab him with the left hand and gets punched in the face i bet there's a clip i wish i would have found it but i i didn't watch this clip um uh i didn't watch all these clips these uh training videos before i just assumed we were going to see everything i needed to see uh because we fight how we train this is how it works um Oh, look at that, you guys. Bop, bop, bop. Oh, here's some defense into some terrible pivoting. Uh, and then no more punches. Not able to go from offense to defense to offense or defense to offense to defense. Why not, Zoo? Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video... Uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. <clears throat> we do film studies like that all the time. We are going to be watching the entire Tim Zhu, uh, Brian Mendoza fight on Patreon. So if you guys want to check it out and analyzing it and talking shit and doing the same kind of stuff <clears throat> um, uh, that I'm talking about in here. But many, many, many of them are the full fight clips. Okay, We're also going to be watching uh, a Janabek film study and how that fight uh, – anybody think that fight's a – you know, something fishy about that, you know, like, I don't want to, like, you can't say robbery because he won and he dominated the guy, but, like, there was something scummy going on, right? Anyway, I got all these clips. Let me show you one here. I'll just pull this random one up. This is <laughs> Janabek when he wants to knock somebody out, guys, right? Boom, boom. Let me jump on his line. Bop, bop. Dumping punches, not being tied up. Unstoppable Janabek here. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, right? Monster Janabek. Ah. Body shot. Missing a couple of shots. But look at how much he's following up, right? So many punches. So good at placing them. Boom. Look what he does to this guy. He hurt this guy. And now what? A little bit of follow-up on the gloves. A little bit of a body shot. Hits him on the glove. Hits him on the glove. Hits him on the glove. I don't think he means to get stuck there. But is he really trying to knock this guy out now? Is he? Anyway, I got a whole film study that I prepared, but I'm not sure if I'm going to put it out. <clears throat> but it didn't look like he was trying to knock that guy out. It didn't look like it at all. <laughs> uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You guys want to see that stupid video? It sounds dumb, but we're going to watch that fight on Patreon. And I'm going to talk a lot of shit about it. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.